Okay. And we're live here on Facebook. We'd like to welcome those listening in podcast land and also welcome Rich for his welcoming of his favorite people. Oh, um, yeah. Yes. Welcome to those listening on our YouTube channel. Yeah. We have a lot of football to talk about. Uh, even some breaking down of some uh, poor decisions made on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. I will explain that, and Rich doesn't understand it yet, but he will, and he's going to tell me I'm 100% right. But, Rich, how you doing? Let's let's get to that information first. I, I'm doing okay. It was kind of a long week of work, but uh, the one kind of like silver lining of it is that it's the last full work week of the of the for the next three weeks due to holidays and time off. So. Yeah, nice. Nice. Well, that's always nice. Mike, I heard you uh, you got to uh, break in the snowblower. Yeah, we got about uh, 8 to 10 inches of snow. It's pretty deep out there. So we hopefully we can find uh, Grace a onesie, or a, uh, onesie and a snowsuit to put her in and plop her down in snow and see what she says. <laughs> so... Uh, but is Sage like in the snow at least? No, she never does though. Oh, but okay. I might try to snow blow some of the patio off so that we can. Uh, she doesn't pee and poop on the actual patio itself. Yeah, if you haven't put two and two together, Sage is his dog's name. Yes, yes, Sage is the dog. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so well, that's good. We have a lot to t lot to do this week. Um, like I said, lots of football to talk about, uh, both college and professional. Rich, what else do we got on the docket for today? Well, you know, we'll be uh, going through a little bit of baseball news as well as a quick pit stop into the NASCAR corner because we had an ownership change or a yeah. partnership. Yep. All that as well and as more. talking about our favorite TV show, The Masked Singer. All that and more. But first, Rich, what should we do? Is it time to roll the intro? Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast with your hosts, Mike and Rich. And we're back. Okay. So, um, Rich... Before we get into any of the sports stuff, we have important stuff to talk about. A poll question of the week. Burgers or sub sandwich? Man, I, this was more than just a runaway. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. This is by far and away the most decisive decision we've ever had in our poll questions. Or at least in this series of questions. No, no, no. Sure. This is... The, you can't get any more decisive than this. Okay, well... 100% of the votes. 100%. You can't get more decisive than that. Nobody likes a party sub. Everybody likes the burgers. 100% of the votes voted for the burger. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. It, it seems like if... Uh, maybe at a couch gate like you're hosting a party uh to watch the big game a party sub would be appropriate um but it just seems like i mean i think we've even been to games up in milwaukee and we've seen people sitting sitting in like their lawn fold-up chairs eating subway and it just doesn't feel right it yeah. doesn't look right yeah i mean sure if you want your party sub i suppose but party subs yeah. the problem with party subs here's the thing this is what nobody gets on party subs the problem with party subs is that party subs, everybody gets the same sandwich. A real party sub. It's just a, it's a triple wide sandwich that's like two to eight foot long, whatever you get. But the 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 meat in it, everybody gets the same meat. Then you yes, you get the lettuce that you can sprinkle on and the tomato you can throw on. But that's more of a hassle than it is an actual deliciousness. Like, have you ever had a good party sub, Rich? Like, 
if it's a sandwich I like, like getting something from the hungry hobo, yeah. Yeah, if you get I have that good if you preference. get a if you get a a, a hobo combo mm-hmm. party hobo or whatever they call it. Yeah, sure. That's a good one. Everybody likes it. But not everybody likes it. I mean <sighs> But do you get your lettuce and your tomato on it when you get it that way, Rich? No, no, you got to dress the sandwich yourself. It just then, comes with the meat and the cheese. And you get like you get a you get a like a sandwich that's like that big and you get a whole packet of mayo. And so you're going to waste half the mayo away. And what if I want onions and peppers? Oh, those are probably also going to be on the side. So now it's... I got to the whole joy of going to Subway or Hungry Hobo by the way, if you are up north here with me, Hungry Hobo is the best uh, sub sandwich place that you can get uh, in the Quad Cities. Close second, Grinders, by the way. Yeah, those condolas are pretty good. Man, I, we, had, we had it two weeks ago. We went there and I got a gondola and Danielle got a, a sub sandwich and it was delicious. And I like I still like just talking about it now makes me want to get a gondola again. But. Either way, nobody's ever happy with a party sub because there's more work involved. A burger, I mean, yeah, you got to slap your ketchup and your mustard and your pickles on it, but that's okay. Normally, they're in an easy squeeze bottle, so you don't have to do all that much work. Burgers are where it's at. All right. So, Rich, this week's poll question, what do we got? Uh, We're going to be going with bratwurst versus buffalo chicken dip. Man, I this think... is where we got into that gray area on between like, well, that that's an appetizer. Do you really do that at a, at a tailgate? But we decided to keep it in. It won its it did. preliminary poll to get into the the top 10. So here it is. Yeah. It's no, probably going to go live after we get off of the air. Because yeah. I don't think I have it scheduled yet. I might already have it scheduled. Uh, but either way, it's going to go live at noon. Okay. Um, so let's head in to the gridiron this week's folks. We have to talk about, um, our fantasy pick Um, I just closed out of it. I don't know why. So, uh, if you are gambling with the picks that we have made, by the way, you've done pretty good. Really? Yeah. Uh, rich, if you followed me, you you would have won 122 games, and you would have only lost 72 games. Hmm. So if you spread the money out evenly and you play only the money line, you're you're going to be up quite a bit. Rich, you're not doing quite as well. You're still doing quite well though. 112 games versus 82. So you're only 10 games back from me. Even if you listen to Midget Nation, shout out to Midget Nation, third place. He is. 103 games uh, and only lost 91. Yeah, your money's a little closer there, but you're still up. Now, if you're following D's nut, D's picks or you're following Dupo, uh, well, Dupo hasn't won any games, and D's picks has only won nine. But Solomon also hasn't lost any games either. I mean, if you don't pick, you lose every one of them. Okay. It, I guess in those trades. Now, um, so, so giving you a recap, um, so who won the week, Mike? I did at 10 and you and Midget okay. Nation tied at nine. Okay. So, so I don't, I don't think that I'm going to be able to, um, make up those 10 games on you to take over first place unless I just go crazy on the upsets and just go opposite world. Um, but I don't think that, that that's a strategy to follow. Nope. Since, <laughs> since some of those teams are really favored to lose by such a large margin, especially the Jaguars and the Lions and the Texans almost every single week. Yep. So game 13, uh, uh, week 13, um, the Cardinals, the Bears actually looked a lot better than I thought they were going to. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't get a chance to watch the game. Um, they stayed they in the game of... decently. Um, 
They uh, Andy Dalton had four picks. Or was it three picks? Yeah, that didn't help. By the way, if it wasn't for turnovers, th- this is this is the, the this is actual factual truth. Uh the lead, the the eleven point lead, is all based on turnovers. Hmm. They actually scored um, less it, if they didn't turn over. If it wasn't for the turnovers in the game, the Bears actually scored more points. All right, the turnovers make the difference, and the Bears lost thirty-three to twenty-two. Uh, so, Mike, the Bears are down to four and eight. Um, if they're going to make that eight win over under, they're going to have to win four out of the last five, which I I don't see happening. So I'm I'm willing to stop making picks based on the fact that I want to see them win and get to eight games. Uh, Rich. So I'm eight and four and picking the Bears, and you're nine and three. Yeah. So um, this week. Th- the Bears play the Packers. We'll give you our picks on that later. Lock of the week this week. Rich, I picked the Rams over the Jaguars. 37-7 to tw- to seven, uh, in mm-hmm. favor of the Rams. Nice, nice game for me. Uh, Rich, you picked the Bucks over the Falcons at 30-17. to 17, Yet another solid victory. Good job on that one. That means we are both 10 and 3 on the season. Rich, how do we do on our upset picks of the week? Not too well, Mike. Okay. Um, your game was a lot closer to mine as the Ravens lost to the Steelers 20 to 19. And I didn't get my upset either as the 49ers lost to the Seahawks 23 to 30. So Russell Wilson and the Seahawks figured out how to win football games again. And well, the well, 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 well. And the, they figured out how to win bit. a football game. Let's not get let's not get the cart before the horse and say they are winning football games. Okay. I, with the way that their season is going to end, they're going to end on a good note. Oh, I'm sure they are, but um, but the Steelers, the Steelers won that game. They did. Because the Ravens chose to go for two and to win the game at, at the end of regulation instead of allowing the best kicker in the NFL to tie the game and go into overtime. Yeah, Was it the right move? That move is the right move. On the road, you always go for the win. That's just standards, Rich. That is standards for NFL. Really is. I know you weren't expecting that one because I'm I'm telling you about a terrible call about two point conversions. No, no, I wasn't. I, I'm sorry. I mean, if it's when the, the Ravens are on the are on that borderline of getting that first round by being right. the number one overall seed, they could have used that win over their divisional rival Steelers, and I think I think that they may have let that that mindset of let's beat our biggest rivals here's, and going for two. Here's I would have gone into overtime. Here's some things that you got to consider. At the second half of that game, how were the Ravens doing against that Steelers offense? Um, I'm not really sure because I, I, I didn't watch the game. You got to watch the highlights every week, Rich. That's what I do. Okay. Uh, in the highlights, you would have seen that the second half, the Steelers were looking good. There's no guarantee you could have stopped him from getting a full touchdown in that on the if they would have gotten the kickoff on the first drive. No way. You can't tell me that you can guarantee you're going to stop him. So if you can't stop him, if you can't guarantee a stop, going for two is the right move. So I, I still don't like the call. I, I think they should have taken their chances in overtime taking a chance that they could have won the coin toss, marched down the field, and gotten the win, and 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 gotten the touchdown again in overtime. I'm not I'm not saying that it's the greatest call of all time. I just think that according to standards, it's the right call. Now, you ready to get into the Thursday night game? 
Sure, because I only have like one little tidbit about the game, and I'm sure, and you, and you've got one about a failed why they shouldn't have or should have gone for two. Yep. So let's give you the score first. The Vikings won 36 to 28 over the Steelers. The game came down to the line, came yep. down to the last minute, a last possession stop by the Vikings defense. Um, we are both now 13 and three on Thursday night uh, for the upsets. I'm at four and nine. Mike, you're at six and seven. Okay. So, so Thursday night, give your take on Thursday night. I want to hear your take first. I talk a lot in this show. I want to hear your take. Well, I, truthfully, because we were watching other things, I only watched maybe like the last minute of oh. that of that game when the Steelers were driving down the field. Okay. So it was fourth and one. They needed to convert to keep their hopes alive of tying the game. Roethlisberger completes a, cl- a clutch pass to, Clay- to Claypool. Who, with the time running, with the clock running, no timeouts, does like his usual first down, like celebration. With the clock running. Yeah. And there was, and because there were other players around him, probably personable, probably for, probably on purpose, they had problems getting the ball back to the officials so that they could set the, set the ball for the next play. All the while, the clock is still running. Yeah. That those extra seconds of wasted time on a on a little first down, little celebration, a catch celebration, and problems getting the ball back to the official, that could have bought that. That probably took enough time off the clock that maybe they can run two plays. Totally could have run when two they plays. get into the red zone. When they get into the red zone, instead of only having time for one, totally could have run two plays there. That's first. I agree, a hundred percent agree with you on that. Um, that was going to be so, part of my my conversation. So, so for me, I, I've, I've I've seen other stories after the fact that uh, Tomlin did bench him and take him out of the game after that fiasco, and he did not. Supposedly, he didn't for re-enter the play. game. So, I'm also hoping that the kangaroo court of probably the veteran leadership also finds him for the, for that. Uh, they should. For that boneheaded move of 100% should not not realizing that the clock is still running yeah yep 100% should um so but before that the game could have been out of reach no matter what no matter what so uh an interception pick six or an interception that gets turned into a touchdown uh in the last five minutes of the game Okay. Um, the Vikings decide to kick the extra point. They are up Give by... Give them a seven-point lead. No. They were up by 15. Okay. They were up by 15. They kicked the extra point to make it up by 16. Here's the problem, folks. This is the problem. <clears throat> At that time... The only right call is to go for two. The only right call is to go for two. At 15, it is a two-touchdown game, period. You have to get two touchdowns. Yes, if they get two two two-point conversions, you lose. But the likelihood for them to get two two two-point conversions, slim to none. That's number one. Number two... If you get that your two point conversion, you are now up by three score minimum. You're up by 17. They have to score three times in five minutes. And you get the pos- you get the ball at some point in the middle of that. Tell me again why. The Vikings didn't go for two. I can't, and given that information, that was the right call to make. Going for a two? Yes. Would have been 100% the right choice to make. The only choice to make. Tomlin is... Yes. uh, uh, Zimmer needs to lose his job. Making decisions like not going for two, when you can close the game, you are putting yourself up by three. 
by three scores, 17 points. There is no way two touchdowns can get them the lead. They have to have at least two touchdowns and a field goal to take the lead. There is no excuse why Tomlin is still a head coach right now. Other than the fact, who do you put in as interim coach? They don't have anybody. Why? Because it's their... It's the sons of all of his buddies. Who's his offensive coordinator? Clint Kubiak. Oh, you mean Greg Kubiak? Kubiak's son? Yeah, <laughs> Kubiak's son. Mike Zimmer's best friend's son. Their defensive coordinator is another guy who's a, one of Mike Zimmer's best friends. Sons. They don't have anybody to take over as head coach. This is the problem, folks. They are not designed to be uh, to to have anybody take over, which is great for him because he'll keep his he'll be able to keep the 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 head coaching job for the rest of the year. But if they end of the year, end of the year could be a different story. If he is not fired the day after the, if he's not fired Monday the sixth. On Black Monday, I don't know what to do. If I if I'm a Vikings fan, I I I riot almost. Hmm. And I can see that. I mean, the Vikings have had a lot of close losses this year, but that could probably easily be passed on just like you're saying not being aggressive when you could put the game more out of reach with the Steelers having a miraculous second half but not just I remember seeing seeing at halftime how like the the Steelers had only they were what up by three scores at half at the half they were up by four it was 29 29 to zero at the half the Vikings score one, twice, I guess, because it was, no, once. They get one touchdown in the second half. The Ske- Steelers got four. And probably we're going to go for, and, and we're real close to getting that, or, yeah, we're real close to getting that fifth. And got a two-point conversion out of the deal. Your second, the Vikings' second half play has been deplorable. It all comes down from the top too. I, I mean, they were showing pictures of Dalvin Cook in this game. As the game's going on, he's sitting there like, "Oh my God, we're going to lose this game." There's nothing I can do about it. We're going to lose this game. He knew they were losing this game. It was over for them. And he was dejected. Like you could see it in his face. Like he's just shocked watching the score rack up to 28 points. Just ridiculous. No reason why that game should have gone that way. Fire Mike Zimmer. Okay. Yeah, I, I think he does need to be fired. Um, coaches needing to be fired. Um, have you heard Matt the latest Nagy? rumor about the Bears? No. Nah, who, who are they bringing in after Matt Nagy? Supposedly, they are really high and want to bring back Leslie Frazier. It back to the organization. Leslie Flazier was a defensive player on the 85 Super Bowl team. He's the current defensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills and former failed Vikings coach as he, he his only head coaching experiences with Minnesota and he had a losing record. Yeah. I like it as a fan of the Bears to bring back an old favorite. 
But as a fan of the Bears, I want somebody that I can trust, and I don't know that I trust Frazier. Now, if they don't let him pick his his coordinators and they pick a really good offensive coordinator, or even if they let him pick everybody but the offensive coordinator and they say, hey, we're going to bring in this guy. He's going to be our offensive coordinator. You good with that? Cool. Let's do it. And you get an off- an offensive genius. Now, I mean a real genius, not this we think he's a genius and we're going to call him Matt Nagy mm. or Mark Tressman or the laundry list of guys we've had that act that we all thought were oh these his work in the in the Canadian Football League is awesome he he was so offensively minded up there he's a disciple of Andy Reid he's going to be great offensively He's his he's the offensive coordinator that that launched Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, no. Okay, that's the latest rumor I've heard. Um, the problem is, I like bring him in, bringing him in as our defensive coordinator. That's understandable. But that would be a lateral move for him. He wouldn't take a lateral move. You're right. <laughs> Head coach, I'm scared about, but. You know, the 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 problem is I think we have talent. Like I think we have really good talent. I think Fields is truly a great quarterback. He just needs a coach that can harness it. And right now, there's nobody in the in the Bears organization that can harness that correctly. So now we got to jump over to. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who we're gonna find. I love your 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 favorite pick for our next uh, head coach, Greg Roman. Yeah, he's never had an opportunity, and he's been he's done really well at every single stop that he's been at as offensive coordinator. Yeah. So that, that's my pick. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's probably, it's probably not going to happen as every article that I've seen about these guys should be considered as the next head coaching candidate of the bears. His name's not even on there. Would you take Eric Bionomy? No. Why not? Eric Bionomy? Yeah. Where's, where, who's he coaching under right now? Okay. Where, where'd we get Matt Nagy? From I think, the Andy Reid tree. Yeah, but Matt Nagy's not as good. I don't know. You're right. It, there's. I, I did no. You, you can't. I think from a PR standpoint, you can't take Beonomy. You can interview him, but I don't think that it would be well in the media circles to hire him to say well we i guess we just hired the wrong andy reed disciple the first time so we're gonna we got the right one this time yeah plus that kansas city offense hasn't looked the best of late they're scoring enough points that's true but not like they have the past two years nope I, i you're right so okay um Let's get into our picks looking ahead to week 14 Bears Packers Rich who you got on this one is there any really is there really a question on it No I, I it, it's got to be the Packers I totally agree going to be the Packers Um yes Aaron Rodgers owns the Bears right now he just does He owns a lot of teams though like let's be honest He does He owns Detroit he owns Minnesota. Minnesota. By the way, we also forgot to say that the that Thursday night's game is the only two teams that in the past year, 365 days, it was actually 368 days. Something like that. They couldn't beat the Lions. Yeah, 368 days. The only two teams in 368 days that could not beat the Lions. How about that? Yeah. The Vikings, the, I mean, the, the Lions, at least, the Steelers at least tied them. Yeah. But they but still didn't beat them. That's not a win. It's not. 
All okay. right, Mike. So we're both taking the Packers. Um, Lock of the week. Sunday it is your game. week to pick. It's an even week. It is. In the league. It's week 14. Who do you have? Well, when I was looking through the schedule earlier in the week and putting the outline together, I penciled in the Chargers over the Giants. But some of their best players are still out with COVID, but I'm going to stick with it because the Giants are starting Mike Glennon as their quarterback. Hey, we we saw Mike Glennon do some okay things. We did? Didn't he play for the Bears? Yeah, he did. He lasted like two or three weeks, and then we turned, we turned the uh, quarterback reins over to Mitch Trubisky. Yeah, but Mike Glennon did our – I mean – no, I don't think he did. He did. I, I mean, neither did Mitch Trubisky, but, you know, I think that's, again, a head coaching problem. Okay, um, yeah. I am going to pick. Well, I'm going to stick with it, though. I'm, I'm going to pick on the Jaguars it. one more week just because there is so much garbage going on down there. Uh, the latest word is that they that the team is, that the head coach is losing the, uh, the uh, locker room. Have you not heard that? I had not heard that. I did see the news on how Trevor Lawrence went to the head coaching staff and told them, we need to have our best player, James Robinson, on the field more often. Uh, I got a... There was an article, and I don't remember where it was. One of the articles I read this morning said that uh, Urban Meyer has... Uh, has been had a, having heated arguments with Marvin Jones uh, at, and in front of the team and that the team that the the that some of their lead players are upset with him hmm. that doesn't surprise me urban just seems like a guy that this is your living room oh, slash sorry. yoga shanti slash wants to do long. things his way and is not going to care what other people think. Yeah, no. And in the college game, you can do that, but not in the pros. Yep. Um, so it apparently the team he's lost the locker room, uh, which is not good for him. Um, should he have taken one of the college uh, jobs available this year, um, the, if if offered? I think he should have. It would have been a. Um... It would have been a lot like what uh, Bobby Petrino did back in the early 2000s when uh, when he just abruptly lost, left the Falcons to take yep. to take a college job at Arkansas. Or Urban Myers, um, or not Urban Myers, uh, Nick Saban uh, in Miami. Yeah, abruptly leaving to go to Alabama, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm having a hard time seeing how Urban Meyer can come back next year. If he's not fired, it wouldn't surprise me if he just resigns. Whether it's a, well, all right, whether it's the ownership going to him and saying, all right, do you want to resign or do you want to be fired? Because this thing ain't work. Whatever we're, this situation just isn't working. I think he's actually got a lot. He's got at least another two years left before they actually get that that heavy handed with him. Do you think that's basically because they don't want to admit a mistake that they hired the wrong guy? I or think... they want to give him time to get his system and players in place. I think that's it right there. Okay. He's got to get his team in place. He's got to get all of that stuff ready to go. All right. Then that's fair. Um, uh, Upset specials, Mike. I'm going to go with the Washington football team over the Cowboys. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I'm going to pick the Buffalo Bills over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right, they're going out on a limb. Well, I don't think it's that big of a limb. If you look at Buffalo, when they've played in nicer weather, they're a great team. When they play in the cold and snowy weather that is their home, they do terribly. So does that mean they should, you know, play for not home field advantage? I think it should, but the way they're playing, I don't think they're going to get a home playoff game. But I think the, their biggest problem with that is that they have no running game. And when you play in the cold and the... Yeah. I mean, the, it showed in their game against the Patriots. 
But they're Patriots not going to be in the cold. They completed three week. passes that game when they on the Monday night game. They completed three passes. Yep. And they just ran the ball. Yep. Due to the high winds and the cold weather. But Buffalo they're... still stuck to their game plan of all right, let's let's throw the rock. Yep. And they lost the game. And but they're not going to be in a cold weather, windy weather area. They're, they're going to be in Tampa Bay this weekend. So it's going to be nice weather, and they'll do well. So let's look for them Buffalo Bills to upset. All right. I don't see it. Um, Mike, you, you brought up something about that Cowboys about that Cowboys pick. What, what was it in our pregame so the folks know? Did, did their coach say something about that? Oh, game? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't know that I would pick that game <clears throat> if nothing more than the bulletin board fodder that was made by fat Jason Garrett, otherwise known as Mike McCarthy. He said, we are going to win that game. We are definitely going to win that game. I guarantee it. You see, I see that as a positive because that's on the Washington bulletin board. And also Dallas is with probably with could be playing with their third string running back as Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott could both be out. This I, week. you know, I don't, th- I, I don't think you're wrong. I just, I mean, man, Mike McCarthy, do you trust him? No. Oh yeah, that's right. Me neither. So you're, you're probably right. You're probably going to get that right. Except I think the Cowboys are a great team this year. So I, yeah. Um, okay. Thursday night football. This is a division rivalry game. And it's for the division, really. This is the heart of the division. The winner of this game probably wins the division. At this point, we have the Chiefs versus the Chargers in Los Angeles. Rich, who you like in this game? For our prediction purposes, I'm going to go with the Chiefs. But I may change it on the Yahoo pick them when it gets closer to the game. If the Chargers that are out with COVID come back are eligible to play on Thursday. Okay. And maybe based on how the how the Chiefs do against their matchup with the Raiders this week. Okay. Um, but I'm going to go with the Chiefs for now. I, I agree it's going to be the Chiefs. I don't think – the Chiefs are finally getting things rolling again. So they are. So look for the Chiefs to, to do quite well. Um, let's skip real quick uh, the power rankings. Uh, we'll come back to that. We have other stuff we want to talk about. We'll do that before we close out the show with the last thing that we talk about every week. Okay. Okay. I can do that. Um. So, so we're gonna go down. We're gonna stay on the gridiron, but we're gonna go over to college. College football. Yeah. Okay. Um. So amidst the the carousel that is uh the college head coaching carousel, uh, we now know what our um what our Super, or our bowl prediction, our bowl games are going to be this year. Our New Year's six, Rich, um, including a team without a head coach that now has a head coach. Um, and I want to look at a team that is actually without a head coach still. In fact, two teams without a head coach. Ooh. Okay. So let we'll we'll talk about. We'll start with the uh, the the New Year's six. So, All right. um, we'll start with the Peach Bowl, Michigan State and Pittsburgh. Yeah, who you like in that game? Um, I think I'm gonna have to go with Sparty. I go with Michigan State in that game. Um, ooh, so this this game is very interesting. Does the pit quarterback play? If the pit quarterback plays, I pick I pick Pittsburgh. Wow, that's trying re- to say that five times fast. Yeah. <laughs> if the pit quarterback plays, I pick <laughs> Pittsburgh. 
Wow. <laughs> um, if he doesn't, you're right. The Spartans are going to win that game. Next, we're going to go with the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, Notre Dame and Oklahoma State. Notre Dame without kind of a head coach. Yes, no, they, no, no. That they 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 have a head coach. They He's have a head Mike, coach, but the, the guy head that coach they hired. the head coach is their former offensive coordinator. So theoretically, his his basic plans are in place, right? Yes. So Freeman, the the guy that was promoted to take over for Brian Kelly since he left for LSU. We'll kind of give our opinions on that a little bit later. He is their full-time head coach. Yes, he'll just have the odd designation of having his pro of his college coaching debut be in a bowl game. Yeah, with a number five ranked team. By the way, your first meeting is f that guy. Like, I don't like using that language. But your first meeting, when he had his first meeting saying, hey, guys, F that guy. He's out. He wasn't good enough for us. It wasn't that you weren't good enough for him. Um, Then we have Ohio State, Utah. playing. Well, well, hold on here. Yeah. So getting back to that game, Oklahoma State, now you could say that that is a team without a coach. It is a because team without Bob a coach. Bob Stoops is an interim coach. He's going to coach that game. Um, and then no, maybe no, he... you're, uh, Stoops. Stoops is in Oklahoma, not Oklahoma State. Oh, never mind then. Sorry. Right? <laughs> I'm jumping the gun on that one. Yeah, he is. Oklahoma State does have a full-time head coach. They did not lose theirs. Yeah. Um, I still like Notre Dame. Uh, the Rose Bowl, Pasadena, Ohio State number as the number six team gets gonna, is going to take on the Utah Utes. Yep. Um, I like Ohio State in this game. It just makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Baylor, Ole Miss in the Sugar Bowl. I like Ole Miss. Yeah, I think I like Ole Miss on that one. Now we get into the important games. The Orange Bowl featuring Michigan versus Georgia. They did this so that the I, – I, I guarantee you the reason they played – they, they have the rankings the way they are is so that it's SEC versus SEC in the national championship game. Tell me yeah, wrong. I, I don't think that they would have wanted to have a rematch of the SEC championship game so close to each other, to have these guys play each other on back-to-back dates. But even beyond that, it's it now sets it up because Georgia's going to win that game. Right? I'd like to see Michigan win it, but I I, I, I think that George is going to win. But if you're but to your little argument about well they they just set it up because Georgia they didn't want to see a Georgia Alabama first round semifinal game is Cincinnati better than Georgia to justify that Georgia could have been should have been number four. They're undefeated. By the way, they are the only undefeated team. In the top four. Playing a much softer schedule than everybody else in the top four. Okay. They're still the only undefeated team in the top four. They are. So. But is that undefeated record, when you look at their schedule, justify them being higher than four? No, I agree. Okay. Um, yeah. A tough, I, draw from, a tough draw for Michigan. Right. But I think the committee got it right in how they ranked. One through four. Um, I think Michigan could have been put in number four, and you could have put Cincinnati in three. Georgia could have been number two. Okay, I can see that. I I can agree with that one. Because, and then Michigan, Alabama, Alabama wins that. I mean, you're still going to end up having Georgia as the Georgia Alabama as the the national championship game. That's just going to be what you it probably is. are. Uh, then we go to the Cotton Bowl, Alabama, Cincy. We've both said it already. Alabama wins that game. Yeah, Alabama. Right? Okay. All um, right. So bowl games of other other bowl games that that involve local teams. The Citrus um, Bowl in Orlando, Florida, Iowa, Kentucky. I don't know much about Kentucky. I think Iowa cleans up in this. But I, game. I'm going to go Iowa. Um, just because. We we love talking about this team. See, 
Arkansas, Penn State in the Outback Bowl. Who you like? Um, I'm going to go Penn State on that one. I'm going to go stay with the Big Ten. Yep. I, I'm okay with that. I'm actually going to pick Arkansas because sweet. Um, oh, my, my, Mike, you know who else gets to go to Orlando? Uh, Iowa State. Yeah, they get to take on Clemson from the ACC in the Cheez-It Bowl. I don't even find the Cheez-It Bowl yet. Oh, there it is. Cheez-It Bowl. December 29th. Yep. Okay. Which is right under, because I'm assuming you're looking at the CBS Sports. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the, the way, Alamo folks, Bowl. neither one of us, neither, we did, did you have that label? Oh, you did have it labeled. Never I did. Mind. Okay. Um, right under the game of no head coach. Yeah. Oklahoma, Oregon. Oklahoma, Oregon. Neither team has a head coach. No, neither like, one does. You're you're a ten win team. Both of these teams are ten win teams. Oklahoma makes sense because Lincoln Riley knows he's never going to be able to win in the SEC. He's just not that good of a coach. He'll never win in the SEC. That's why he ran away. What's Oregon's excuse? Mario Cristobal did used to play for the Miami Hurricanes. So he's going back home to coach his alma mater. Okay. If I remember right. I suppose. But you legitimately, by the way, on that note, uh, did you hear that, that UCLA has approved Chip Kelly to go back to Oregon to interview for that job? I did not see that. I had heard that Oregon wanted to, was looking into the possibility of bringing back Chip Kelly. But I had not heard that UCLA, UCLA was going to allow it. Has approved it, and will let him out if he chooses to do so. Chip Kelly's going to get a massive contract to go back to Oregon. He's going back to Oregon, which is the worst thing in the world for Lincoln Riley. Because now Lincoln Riley is going to have to face Oregon, which is a team that's already built to win. This is bad news for Lincoln Riley. All right. So, um, so who do you like in local... the no coach game? Um, I like the Ducks. I, you know, I was thinking the Ducks, but I'm actually going to pick the Sooners. Okay. We're going to pick Oklahoma. Let's go to that cheesy it game. Um, Iowa State at, uh, versus Clemson. Is this going to be an actual game or is this going to just be an embarrassment? I don't know. I think it's going to be an embarrassment. I think Clemson just rolls over Iowa State. All right. And probably the last local bowl that we'll look at, um, the Guaranteed Rate Bowl down in Phoenix, Minnesota against West Virginia. Okay. Um, hmm. Isn't that... Uh... West Virginia Volunteers? No, it's Tennessee. Yes. Uh, West Virginia is the Mountaineers. Mountaineers, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, as much as I want to say Minnesota, I've always been... I've West Virginia has been my second... My, like, college team that I actually... In, I follow that's not a Big Ten school. Okay. So... Um, but no, I, yeah, Minnesota looks good. We'll go with Minnesota. All right. Um, yeah, I think I got to go with the, the Mountaineers. Now, that one. now, Rich, one thing that we don't have on here today is the big day. You're not wearing any, any gear to support your team today. I, I do. I am. It's, it's off camera. I have the oh. United States. Oh, you have the Army, United States. The Eagle. The Eagle. So you are supporting, are you, are you picking... Uh, are you picking uh, the the Army as always? Of course. Okay. By the way, folks, uh, the Army-Navy game, the one game where after the game, any one of those players would take a bullet for any one of those other players any day of the week. That's right. I If, it do, if that, that doesn't bring a tear to your eye, you're not American. So... Um, 
So any yeah. other bowl games you no. that you feel could be a good matchup, no, good, or good. maybe watch. So we kind of made a kind of talked a little bit about coaches leaving their teams. You mentioned Brian Kelly abruptly leaving for LSU to to coach in the SEC. Um, we got but now we supposedly could have UCLA um, losing its coach to allow Chip Kelly to go back to Oregon. Um, Lincoln Riley left for left Oklahoma to go to USC. Um, and I believe those were the and then of uh, Oregon losing Mario Cristobal, who is going to go down and coach Miami. So where do you want to start on this, Mike? Because you brought it up as something that you wanted to talk about last week, but we just ran out of time. So technically, there's only two. There's still two openings. Temple and Oregon are the biggest. Are two FBS teams that still have openings. Um, big stories to talk about. Uh, how about Florida uh, picked up Billy Napers, Naper, uh, the Louisiana head coach. Okay, which makes an opening. At LSU, LSU picks up Brian Kelly from Notre Dame, which, again, we talked about, brings allows Bruce Fieldman to, or not Fieldman, uh, uh, Marcus Freeman uh, to take on from the def- as defensive coordinator. Sorry, I, I was wrong earlier. He's the defensive coordinator to take on as defensive coordinator to just move up. By the way, uh, apparently. Um, Brian Kelly told uh, offered jobs to both Marcus Freeman and I can't remember his offensive coordinator's name, but they both turned him down to stay at Notre Dame. Good for them. Even if only one of them could get the head coaching job, good for them. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Miami picked up, like you said, Mario Cristobal, the Oregon head coach. Um. Nevada picked up Ken Wilson, the Oregon co-defensive coordinator. Hmm. Um, Rich, I'm just going to stick this in here so you can actually look at this. Because this, this makes it even crazier. So, so where, where do you want to start with head coaches? Did, did any of the, I mean, the bigger names that moved, Kelly and Riley... Did they make the right moves? That's a split answer for me. Okay. Uh, Chip Kelly, or Brian Kelly, yeah, I think that's probably the right move. Wrong way to make the move, but the right move. Actually, no. I'm sorry, that's wrong. That is the wrong move. I think LSU is a better place to be. Now, or Notre Dame is a better place to be, but... The problem is he wants to recruit people that he knows will never get into Notre Dame. That's the problem. He wants to pick up guys who are less than qualified human beings to play at Notre Dame. Notre Dame has some high standards. And not just about your academics, but they have some life standards that you have to be a part of. Chip or Brian Kelly couldn't make that work, so. Um, well, I think he did make it work. He just never but thought. I mean, he he realizes that without some of those terrible human beings as players, you're never gonna get. Um, you're never gonna get. And if somebody, anything, the the academic standards will be lower. Yeah. So he won't have to always recruit people with in mind of well. I, well, I, I'd love to recruit you to Notre Dame and bring you aboard, but you just don't meet the standards academically. Yeah. And we don't think that you would fit in at Notre Dame based on probably the moral standards that, that the college has being a private Catholic school. Did you click on that link I sent you? I did not. Okay. You should look at it because Oklahoma actually does have a head coach already. Oh, it does? Yeah. Brent V. Uh, Venaby? Brent Veach. Going to be yeah, well, Thunderbolts, I guess. Yeah, I think I do remember that they hired him away from Clemson. Is from, from Clemson. Clemson. So, Bob Stoops is is covering for the bowl game. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I guess supposedly they were rumored they they wanted to bring Cliff Kingsbury 
Yeah, they wanted to lure him away from the Cardinals. I think that I think that guy's. I he he was on a hot seat two years ago. Last year it was a warm seat. Now I think he's it's it's ice cold. It is the cool side of the pillow, if you will. All right. Um. Now. Uh, conversely, Lincoln Riley going to USC, where he doesn't have to face, where he's a Pac-12 guy now. Mm-hmm. Getting, excuse me, getting away from the SEC. That's genius. He's gonna be a big fish in a small pond out there. Sounds like he's gonna try to keep guys from LA. You look at. You look at the landscape of quarterbacks and top end players around the country that come out of LA and California in general. It's amazing. USC just can't get a, get them to stay home. Now they got a coach that I think will be able to keep them keep them there. So I yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, with Brian Kelly, I mean, the you mentioned the now his recruiting pool will open up being at LSU. And but and the other thing that opens up for him is if he can win, he's got a more he's got an easier path to the national championship final four. Yeah. With Notre Dame, if you lost one or two games, you were out of it. Because but, you didn't have a conference title game and you were scheduling but you're we scheduling all... your own your own games. We all know they're going to 16. They're going to 16. It's not going to be... So, at 16, Notre Dame should get in every year. I don't... I, I that's That I have a problem with. Now, yeah. chance of winning because of his opening up and all that stuff, yeah, I think he, he has a better chance. So um, that's all I really had to say about it. Okay. Yeah, I, I like the Lincoln Riley move for him. It's a good move. Um, I, I still don't understand why Texas and Oklahoma, other than for money, are wanting to leave the Big 12. They go to the SEC. They're going to have a hard time winning football games. If you can't win in the Big 12 and you're going to go to a tougher league, yeah. good luck. Good luck. Okay, the MLB lockout still going on. That's pretty much still all going have, on. All we have to say about that one, right? Yeah. Um, we have Hall of Fame. We have new Hall of Famers that got announced. Oh, your link, um, your link's broken. It is. Oh well. Um, I guess I mean the two big names that come up the the names if I can remember off the top of my head, uh, Buck O'Neill, veteran of the um, the Negro Leagues. <clears throat> And I was kind of surprised that he wasn't already in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. That it took him this long to get elected. And um, Mimi Minoso, the Cuban the Cuban player that played for the White Sox for many years. Yeah. Um, we also got Tony Oliver. Um, oh, I think we lost Rich. Um Hopefully we can get him back here in a second. Um, anyway, um, there you are back. Hang on, I got you muted. And I guess having the headset here, that dropped the call. That ended the phone call. Yeah, no big deal. You're back, though. Um, do you get get your throat clear out? I did. Okay, a little much better. Okay. Um, so uh, Buck O'Neill, and like you said, and and Buddy Fowler. Um. So, Gil Hodges, Jim Kant, and I think you were saying before I dropped off the call, uh, Tony Olivo. Yep. From the Twins. Yeah. And uh, so. They were voted in by a veterans committee that, that uh, looks at players from that era of baseball that didn't make it in by getting voted in by the writers. Did the writers and not the vote writers, in? 
No, the writers did not vote them in when they were on the original ballot. No, oh, okay. No, the writers voting happens, it will be announced the 25th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So more Hall of Fame candidates coming, but those, that's really the only thing that came out of MLB this week. Yep. Apparently no movement on the lockout. Uh, Richard Petty Motorsports sells to GMS Racing. Um, yeah. So now, so I'm kind of glad that we didn't talk about this last week yep. because I think more has come out about this as it seems like they are now kind of merging operations. Yeah. As Eric Jones is number 43, Petty Car is going to stay on stay. They're not going to replace him, and it almost seems like GMS and Petty are more merging instead of selling. Yeah, that's what that's what it looks like. Yeah, which is good for both. I think it'll help. Um, the name recognition will help GMS and uh, Richard Petty will get that money, the funding that he needs. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to do the power rankings, or you want to cut it off there? Um, let's at least maybe not with much talking about why we put them where we are. But let's at least do top 10, bottom five, maybe where we put the Bears and the Vikings. Okay. We'll do just ours. We won't worry about uh, the power ranking, power rankings. Yeah, I, I can go with that. Okay. Um, I'm good with that since we're getting close to our hour time frame. I mean, we're at so an I, hour and I, one minute already. Oh, oh well. Uh, um, number one, I have the Arizona Cardinals. Agreed. Number two, I have the New England Patriots. No. I went with the Green Bay Packers here. I went with the Green Bay Packers at number three. Who do you got at number three, Rich? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I have them at number four. Four is where I have the Patriots. Yeah, I think um, number five, I have the Dallas Cowboys. Five, I I kept I kept the Ravens here. Okay. Although I'm thinking that maybe I should have had them a little bit lower with the way that they lost to the Steelers. Yeah. Uh, but it is what it is. Number six, the Kansas City Chiefs moving back up into the top five, uh, top ten. Yep, I, I have the Chiefs here as well. Number seven is where I have the Baltimore Ravens. Seven is where I put the Cowboys. Okay, so we just flopped our, se- our fives and sevens is all we did. Number yep. eight, I have the Tennessee Titans. I went with the L.A. Rams here. I Ooh, yeah. Uh, number nine, I have the Buffalo Bills. Agreed. And I flipped your the Rams to number ten. Oh, uh, that's where I put the Titans. Hey, look at us. We're we're geniuses, folks. We're there. We're we're right there. And yeah, I totally so agree. So maybe so what what was the one team that you had a hard time leaving out of the top ten? So who is maybe at number eleven? Uh my number eleven is the Cincinnati Bengals. That's where I put there as well. Like it just was hard. They mm-hmm. they look like they deserve to be in the top ten, but they also at times look like is this team a- able to beat anybody decent? Yeah, I mean that that's kind of how I feel with the Bengals and the same thing with the Bolts. Yeah. Okay, they're going to make the playoffs, but are they a top ten team? Number thirty two, Rich. I went with the Jacksonville Jaguars. What? You chain? You didn't put the Detroit Lions? I did not. Okay. They finally got a win. They have a tie. They have a tie against the Steelers team. So, and, yeah. Okay. Um, I went 31 for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, the, the Lions didn't move up too much, Mike. That's where I have the Lions. Who do you got at 30, Rich? The Texans. Ding, ding, ding. 29? The Jets. Ding, ding, ding. 28? the Chicago Bears. Ooh. I actually have the Giants here. I have the Giants at number 27. Rich, we talked about it last week. In a head-to-head match, who do you like better, the Bears or the the Giants? Probably the Bears. Okay. But uh, looking at their records, I, I and maybe judging the Bears more harshly cuz you watch because them. Cuz they're right? my team and I watch them. That's why I have to put them below the Giants. I have them at 26, um, by the way. All right. 26 is where I put the Seahawks. Okay. I have the Seahawks at 27. Okay. So, um, where so do you have the Vikings? Not that far off. Which team? The Vikings? 
I put the Vikings at number 23 at the time. Uh, as did I. As did I. Okay. By the way, they moved up. To, they they do. They will move up uh, next week, uh, as the Steelers will also move down significantly. By the way, for me. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, I thought I, after seeing how they lost and maybe how they've also played the past couple of weeks, I think I had them too high at number fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, that's that might so be. So they're probably going to be moving down into at least the lower teens, maybe even into the twenties. I week. have them at thir- I have the Steelers at thirteen. I think they're going to be mm-hmm. at twenty, if not lower. Okay. But. So maybe more time with power rankings next week. Yep. And also probably off air, Mike, we'll probably have to schedule how we're going to do the shows with the holiday season coming up so we can announce that on next week's show. Rich, you have a big shout out to make, don't you? That would be next week. Oh, you're going to do it next week? Isn't that yeah, the, is that the week. exact date? It is. It is, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, that'll be next week. Um, I do have a shout out before we get into the masks here, though. Um, okay. A happy birthday to my nephew, Brady, as it was his birthday this week. They were supposed to be coming up here for a family birthday celebration, but had an illness uh, in the family. So Those are never we fun. won't get to see him until around Christmas time. Okay. Well, um, folks, I have no shout outs. Oh, I do. Eli Kincaid, happy birthday. Yeah. Eli. Fan of the show, happy birthday, sir. Next week we have a couple of big shout-outs. We'll talk about those yeah. next week. Okay. All that next week. So, Mike, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear fan, about the mass Singer, you have our permission to leave. But before you do, please like, like this video, rate us, and uh, give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe, all those things. Uh, if you're on YouTube, leave, subscribe, leave hit the bell. Leave, leave us a, a comment. If you leave a comment, we'll give you a shout out next week. If you leave a comment saying you have to leave, if you're if you're a mass singer follower and you haven't watched it yet, leave a comment that you haven't watched it yet. Let us know. If you do follow and you do watch the mass singer and you want to shout out anyway, tell us what you thought of this week's uh, mass unmasking. So that's enough, Rich. Yeah, that's enough. The banana. Split and the heart went against each other this week with some Did really it? good duets. By the way, I don't think I've ever heard um, Michelle Sir- Scherz- or Nicole Scherzinger. I don't think I've ever heard her sing. I said the same thing about Robin Thicke. I've heard Robin I never knew Thicke. Robin Thicke was that good. I heard Robin Thicke. I did not realize he was that good. Blurred lines, it's auto tuned and produced too much. Uh, but yes, it was great. Uh, both of them shocked the heck out of me at how good they were. Both of them shocked the heck out of me at how good they were. What did you think? Well, I kind of walked away from last week's episode wishing that they had not unmasked the skunk and then pulled her as a wild card and let her sing one more week and go up against that and made it a three-way competition for who gets to go against the bull. Yeah. And I think if that would have happened, Skunk could have beat him. I think Skunk could have beat him. Um, I think, I do think uh, I was, man. So uh, here we go. This is where it really gets spoiler time. The Queen of Hearts won the Group yep. B uh, finals. And I think that was the right move. Uh I do. T- I think the singer of the Banana Split is one of my favorite singers of all time. Mostly because I fell in love with her on uh, on American Idol. But I was very annoyed with the fact that the um, that that the Banana Split that the Banana never sang. Yep. So because of that, I think it's the right decision. If the banana split would have sang and it would have been duets the whole time, I honestly think they could have done well enough to be to 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 deserve to win the group B. But the banana split went home and they were Catherine McPhee 
and David Cross. Yeah, I love Kathleen McPhee, by the way. Ever since she was on uh, on uh, American Idol. Uh, yeah. The yellow dress, yeah. that's all I'm saying. It was really good. I mean, now, now you pointed out in our pregame that, yes, they had been guessing those people, or they had been dropping that, you know, I think it is David Cross and Catherine McPhee throughout the show, but my initial thoughts when they all pulled that out as their first impression guess and said, yeah, I think I'm going to stick with it. I think it is those two was that why weren't you stomping saying that, nope, I know exactly who it is. I think it's this person, this person every single week. If that was your first impression guess and not sticking with it and saying that every single week. Yeah. That was the thing that kind of got me thinking of this show is rigged. They they either allowed them to change their guess, and that was their first impression guess, or they didn't want them revealing every single week that it was that person because then that picks up too much steam. And then my other theory of if the panel is right is right on, it's that guy. They're the ones who voted off that night. Yeah, that that had always been my theory as well. But uh, that they have voted for those. They've had multiple They have times. said the both of those names multiple times throughout the season. Yep. Then I can bring up then I can then I can go with that. I don't I don't remember them saying that group that that uh that couple throughout the throughout the season, but uh I just found it odd that three people said that's who it is on the on the first night. Yet there really wasn't much talk amongst the panel when they were when that was brought up before they're unmasking that you know what i think it is that group i can agree with you on that or no they but the but the fact that robin came out and said you know i don't know if it's david cross i, I he's a family friend i know that's not uncle david yeah <laughs> was kind of neat kind of a fun tidbit yep so folks um i think so the that... season finale who do you like the bowl or the heart the bowl yeah, the bull. I think the bull has way like, man, the bulls. I, I think the bull's gonna win. Yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta agree. So, okay. any guesses on who either of them are? I don't. I don't know. Do you? I don't. Okay. Um, I, I think that the heart is some country singer female country singer, but I mean, the one name that came up to mind was Kelly Pickler, but I, I don't think that that the body build is right for her. Well, the heart hides a lot of the body. It does. Um, uh, um, So more on the mass Singer next week. Yep. As we'll know who won. We'll know who the final two people are as both of them are getting on mass next week. Yep. And um, I think so that I think does it for that the show, up our show. So what's the time to do, Mike? Roll the outro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa. This is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich. 